he had to choose between me and being Superman, and it was through this big tormenting decision. And and because he was in love with me, he chose me. But then he reverses that, and uh, in the end, he does a special trick that makes me forget or I ever found out who he really was. So he he saves the world and he gets the girl, you know? He gets the girl and then he saves the world and the girl loses the man. But in a way, if he had to give up his superpowers in order to to make it with Lois Lane, which he well, did in I a way... Well, it was you more than you... just the sexual aspect. <laughs> Sorry, that was a... It was in order to have a relationship, a love relationship with me. I mean, he fell madly in love with me, and I was madly in love with him. And it's a very romantic movie, besides being a kind of adventurous one. It's just incredibly sexist. There's just some really weird, deep meaning that... It's like Samson and Delilah. I mean, it's really bizarre. It's, I feel as though people haven't gotten anywhere, at least men haven't gotten anywhere, since 1938, if they're still doing movies like this. But do... Why do you think that... that... Do you, what do you think the superheroes represent in that respect? Because they tend not to have romantic liaisons. Um, well, they're for little boys, let's face it. There's, there's other things besides superheroes in comics. I think that the superhero comics are specifically for little boys who at this point still think girls are a drag and it's reflected in the comic. I hope they're not for grown-ups. What did you think of Supergirl? I think she's so dull. Oh, I can't stand her. What do you think she represents? She represents conformity. She's a nice girl in a blue costume. I can't bear her. Most women I know who draw comics, and there are very few of us, don't really draw superheroines. And I come the closest to it. I draw strong women, but they don't have superpowers. They're victorious in the end, and they're strong because I, I like women who are like that, and I want to be like that. But. Um, since the days when I was a kid and tried saying Shazam and it didn't work, it never did turn me into Cat Mary Marvel, I gave up on trying to have superpowers and just tried to be as strong and as wonderful as I could possibly be, and that's what my women are like. Do you, so you sometimes put yourself into the comics? I always put myself into the comics. For me, comics is a way of making things come true. If you want something to have really happened, you draw it and you write it, and then when it's published, it really happened. I fantasize being all the women I draw. I did paper dolls in which you could dress me it's like everything I could possibly want to be. This is your space pirate queen, and here's Wonder Woman. Here's your jungle queen, who's basically Sheena, queen of the jungle. This says B and D, and that's what it is. And What's B and D? It's bondage and domination. It means I just really do like black leather and high-heeled boots. It doesn't mean that I want to whip people or tie them up or anything. You're not wearing black... Are you wearing black leather? No, you're no, not wearing black I'm leather. No, I'm just wearing black cotton and... High heel boots. But that is that the sort of is that the kind of sort of forceful sort of image that you you like? Yes, very much. In fact, this woman I'm drawing right now has thigh high boots, but I decided against making them high heeled because it's very hard to fight crime in high heels. Well, there there was a lot of uh, fantasization uh, concern because in, the, in 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 the case of myself, like Joe, I was quite meek and I was quite mild, and uh, there were attractive girls around who were just the uh, didn't notice I exist and, and, and just didn't care at all, you know, her for me. And, and I thought, gee, wouldn't it be great if uh, I was a mighty person yeah. and, uh, and, and these girls didn't know that this clod here is really <laughs> somebody special and that helped lead to this whole triangle setup of uh, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Superman. All, all my uh, young days as a boy, I was pushed around by, I was very small and uh, I was always pushed around by bullies and, and, and so forth, so that was one of my dreams, <laughs> my wish fulfillment to But you actually, took, you actually tried to do something about it, you took a course. Oh so. yes, I took very courses in bodybuilding and weightlifting yeah, and, and to build myself up. Oh definitely, I, I did for, for quite a few years. And uh, I don't know if it helped, but at least that was my... Uh, I made an effort to yeah. try to build myself up. Inside a superhero comic, you can expect to find a course in bodybuilding. For years, overweight Rex and skinny weaklings have been offered new hope by the world's most perfectly developed man, Charles Atlas. Let me prove I can make you a new man. 
You need a powerful, well-proportioned build you can be proud of anywhere, anytime. Iron hard stomach muscles. Bulging biceps. Tireless legs. More energy and stamina. A more magnetic personality. The Greek god type of physique that women rave about at the beach. The kind that makes other fellows green with envy. Dave Prowse, Britain's strongest man, in the unlikely setting of South London, transformed Christopher Reeve from a 13-stone weakling into the mighty man of steel. Understandably, Dave rather fancied the part himself. You saved my life. How can I ever thank you? No need to, ma'am. It's my job. You're so good looking. Uh, there's your apartment. I'll leave you there and go save an entire continent. Max Factor introduced Lip Potion, the world's first clear roll-on lip shine. Yeah, I came very close to playing the part of Superman. I managed to get an introduction to Dick Donner, who was the director. And that came about through Elliot Kastner. And uh, I went down to see Dick Donner, and he's looking all the way through my photographs. And I got pictures of me as Superman. He's going, perfect, Dave, just what we're looking for. Absolutely marvellous, lovely. He said, of course, there's no way in which we can play you. I said, well, why can't you play me? He said, well, you're not an American, are you? He said, we have to play an American. And next thing I know, I get a phone call. Can you get down to the studios immediately? And I thought, this is my big chance. So on went the navy blue suit, and on went the horn glasses. Chased down to Shepperton Studios, and they said, well, we've actually got Superman. And I said, well, you know, thank you very much. And then he said, no, no, not, not you. Um, he said, we found this guy in New York called Chris Reeve um, who's going to come and play Superman. And I said, well, what's he like? And they said, well, he's, at the moment, he's six foot five and weighs about 13 stone. So uh, I said, well, he's positively skinny. I said, you can't, how, can you, how can you have somebody at 13 stone, six foot five, where, you know, being Superman, who's supposed to be the all-American big muscular hero? And he said, well, this is the problem. He said, we'd like you to uh, build him up for us. So I said, yeah, great. And I said, what would you like him to look like? And he said, oh, we want him to look like you. Dave Prowse, champion weightlifter and Britain's strongest man, will try to squeeze more water out of that towel. Is he going to? Can he do it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, he can't get a drop out. He's having one more try. No, hot points beaten him. Primarily, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of built that way. And I thought, well, I, I, I should have been an obvious choice. The term Superman was first used by the German philosopher Nietzsche. Nietzsche said the weak shall perish. He believed in the possibility of a man so powerful he could rise above all ordinary moral considerations through his own will and endeavor. Superman is a direct translation of Übermensch. In German, the Übermensch, they also use sometimes the word Overman. But it goes way, way, way back into antiquity. There's a hyperanthropos in Greek. So that's an old thing, but the Superman is a direct translation of Übermensch. With his book Seduction of the Innocent, Dr. Frederick Wortham created a sensation in the early 50s. Dr. Wortham maintained that juvenile crime and vandalism could be traced directly to the reading of comics. His campaign led to some publishers going out of business altogether. He's become a legend in the history of comics. The Superman itself is the symbol of force, power and violence. That is what he represents. And that has had an enormous influence which one cannot possibly exaggerate on the use, not only of this country, but of the use of many other countries, you see, especially in Germany. It is utterly impossible to understand what happened in Germany, all the different massacres and so on, unless you realize that they were 
imbued with the Superman spirit. It represents the, the abolition of law. The Superman is above the law, all laws, the democratic law, the real law, and even the law of physics and chemistry. He's a person to himself. So what you teach the young person, and incidentally the older person too, is that uh, you have no responsibility. You have to appeal to one individual who will take care of everything. It's ironic that Nietzsche's concept of the Superman, which fueled Nazi ideology and gave rise to Hitler, should have been innocently appropriated by two young Jewish boys from Cleveland, Ohio. Right around that time, uh, 